This is a companion video to the conservation of energy tutorial worksheet that is shared on Blackboard. So for best results, you should uh, do that worksheet on your own first uh, and then go through the um, answers here. Or you can work through as much as you feel confident in and then um, watch the equivalent part of the video and then continue working on the, on the worksheet. So here we have a, a case where we're looking at work and changes in kinetic energy uh, and two experiments. So in experiment one, uh, two hands are pushing in on blocks A and B with constant force of magnitude F naught. And in experiment one, there's a spring between them and we're told that the blocks start at rest and end with a velocity equal to zero. And in experiment two, there is no spring. So for each of those systems, uh, so in, in experiment one, we're looking at the system that is the blocks plus spring. And in experiment two, it's just the blocks. And for each of those systems, we want to look at the net external work. We want to look at the change in kinetic energy. We want to look at the change in potential energy. And we want to look at the change in total energy and see if each of those is positive, negative, or zero. All right, so we'll tackle all of that in turn, but first let's break. We're, we'll actually start with experiment two because that's a little bit simpler. So uh, again, these blocks begin at rest, um, and each hand pushes uh, with a constant force of magnitude f naught, and the blocks both move a distance, uh, the same dis uh, magnitude of displacement d naught. Uh, so block A moves, as we're looking at the picture, block A moves to the right, block B moves to the left. So if we look at the work done by the hand on block A, is that positive, negative, or zero? Okay, and that work done on block A is positive because the hand pushes to the right and the block also moves to the right. Now let's look at block B. Is the work done on block B positive, negative, or zero? That work is also positive because the hand pushes to the left and the block also moves to the left. So remember with work, uh, we should all agree on the sign. Right? So whether we took to the right to be positive or to the left to be positive, in either case, we would get that the work done was positive on both of these blocks. Okay, so now let's consider the two blocks as a system. So if we look at the work done by the hands on the system of two blocks, right? so the total work of the hands on the system that consists of two blocks, is that positive, negative, or zero? All right, that work is positive. So uh, it, it's easy to fall into a trap to say that somehow the work done on each of those would cancel out somehow because the blocks are moving in different directions. But there's two different ways that we can see that that's not the case. So we can see that the work is positive because if we want to look at the total work, we would look at the work uh, done on block A, which is positive, and the work done on block B, which is positive. So when we add two positive numbers together, we still get a positive total for the net or, uh, total work on the system. We can also use the work energy theorem, which is that the uh, total work is equal to the change in total energy of the system. So here, the only type of energy that we have is kinetic energy. And we know that if we um, push on blocks with a constant force, we're going to um, accelerate them. Or in the language of energy, uh, we're going to take them from zero kinetic energy and give them some kinetic energy. So at the end of this, the blocks are not at rest. They would still be moving toward each other. Uh, at least until they, they hit each other, but we're not uh, letting the system go that far. So we know that they start at rest and then they end with some positive kinetic energy. So that means that there must be some positive work done uh, because the change in kinetic energy is positive. All right, now let's go back to system one, which is the one that's a little bit more complicated. So they both start or the blocks start with velocity zero, and we're told that they end with velocity zero here as well. Um, again, the hands push with the um, same constant force of magnitude f naught as the blocks move toward each other. 
So if we look at the external work done by the hands on the blocks spring system, is that positive, negative, or zero? That work is positive. So the same analysis that we did before still applies. Even though there's a spring now, uh, the hands are doing the same thing. The, the, the blocks are moving the same displacement. So uh, the external work is still the same. And now let's look at the change in kinetic energy of the block spring system. Is that positive, negative, or zero? Okay, this one is zero because the blocks start with zero kinetic energy, the velocity is zero, and they also end with zero kinetic energy, zero velocity. Okay, finally, let's look at the change in potential energy of the block spring system. Is that positive, negative, or zero? Uh, a detail that, that should be added here is that the, the spring starts at, as being relaxed and then is compressed at the end. So the change in potential energy here is positive because the um, spring starts out relaxed, so there's no potential energy of the spring. Uh, but then when it's compressed, we know that the potential energy of, of a spring is given by 1 half kx squared, where x is the uh, displacement from equilibrium, and so uh, the compressed spring will have some potential energy. And so if we look at the um, external work on the uh, block spring system, I mean, we can, the other way that we can understand this is if we say, well, we know the external work was positive, and that's going to be equal to the total change in energy of the system which is the change in potential energy plus the change in kinetic energy. So because we know the change in kinetic energy is zero from the previous question, but there is some positive work done, the only way for that to be true is if the change in potential energy is going to be positive. All right, so now uh, having done all of that analysis, we can fill in the, the grid from the beginning. So if we go back and look at the work, we said that the work um, but done by the hands, which is the net external work on the systems, is positive in both cases. And that lets us go ahead and right away say that the change in total energy is positive, right? because the net external work is equal to the change in total energy. So then if we look at system two, the change in potential energy there is zero. Well, there just is no potential energy, right? There is no spring involved. The blocks aren't moving um, up or down, so we don't have to worry about gravitational potential energy at all in either of these cases. So there is no potential energy, so its change is zero. So the only way for there to be a change in energy is, that's positive is if the change in kinetic energy is positive. So we know that in that picture, um, the blocks would be still moving at the end. Now if we go back to experiment one, we were given this extra information that the blocks had no velocity or zero velocity um, after they've been pushed. So we can say the change in kinetic energy is equal to zero. And again, we know the total change in energy is positive, so that means there must be a positive change in potential energy. So we've been able to figure out uh, how to fill in that grid. All right, so now let's add one more experiment. So we can see experiment one we'll call the stiff spring experiment, and then experiment two we'll call the no spring experiment. So let's add in a, a third variation, uh, which is weak spring. So in this case, um, this spring constant is just a um, smaller value than it is in experiment one. Okay, so if we compare these three, and we want to rank by the change in total energy. How would we do that comparison? Well, what's the same for all three? We know that in all three cases, we still have the same force from the hands over the same displacement. And so therefore, we have the same external work. That means that the change in total energy for all three systems, all three experiments, is going to be the same. 
Okay, so the only question is, how is that divided up between a change in potential energy versus a change in kinetic energy? Well, now let's look at change in potential energy. The one with the stiff spring is going to have the, the biggest change in potential energy, followed by the weak spring, and then the one with no spring has, as we discussed before, no change in potential energy. So the stiff spring, again, following the formula 1 half kx squared, because the displacement x is the same for both, uh, if you have a bigger spring constant, you're going to have a bigger change in potential energy. So now keeping in mind that change in potential energy and change in kinetic energy have to add up to the same thing, we can say that the rankings for change in kinetic energy is going to be uh, flipped. So the no spring is going to have the biggest change in kinetic energy. Right? So those blocks will still be moving fast uh, at the end after they've been pushed toward each other. Uh, the weak spring one is still going to be moving. Right? They're still moving toward each other because we have the same work done as in the stiff spring, which comes to a stop, but we have a weaker spring, so they're still moving toward each other. All right, so there's a few more questions uh, and another page that you can go through in the um, worksheet tutorial. And one of those questions will become a um, practice problem that we will work, to get, work through together later.